running. The simplest, and some, including me, would argue, the best sport. Running strengthens muscles, builds up endurance, burns calories, and improves cardiovascular health. It is also a sport can be done almost in anywhere, at any time, and by anyone. The biggest factor that makes running so accessible is its little requirement of gears. All one need to run is a pair of shoes. However, the seemingly simple piece of gear might affect your body more than you know. A good pair of running shoes can improve your balance, cushion on any of your feet, which reduces chance of injury, and produce better grip to the ground, which improves your speed. And a bad pair of running shoes, well, don't have any of the aforementioned features. In fact, poorly chosen footwear not only lack those benefits, but can also result in great discomfort and sometimes even injuries. The lightest case might result in annoying blisters or shin splints. And for worst cases, bad running shoes might result in long-term injuries in your joints or muscles, such as Achilles tendinitis and runner's knee. Don't believe me? You don't see any runner running around in formal dress shoes, do you? So, how do people fix these problems? Some companies result in inventing more technological advanced shoes that increase your speed and comfort. However, it is obvious that one single model of shoes won't fit everybody's feet. Weight, height, age, gender, the event or distance you run, all of these factors are variables to be considered when you select your shoes. There isn't a need for one universal perfect model. The perfect model for each and every one of you is probably out there already in the world, given how many different kinds of shoes there are. You just have to find it. But that itself is not easy. When most people buy running shoes nowadays, they just go to online stores like Amazon and pick the cheapest or stylest sneakers they can find. But we know neither low price nor good decorations really help preventing your injuries. More experienced runners know to go to stores like Marathon Sports and have professional shoe inspectors to help. Even then, it is still a lot of trouble. You have to try out many pairs of shoes, give subjective opinion on the comfort level, rely on the third-person inspectors with doubtful amount of accuracy. It's not like the staff or us are actually connected to any sensors that will give accurate and objective data that we can reference to when we select running shoes. Or if we are not connected to any sensors, why don't we just put some in the shoe? And have the computers to do the work for us like so many other tasks out there. Well, that's what I did, or tried to do anyway. My take of this problem include five major parts. The hardware, the Raspberry Pi software, the Firebase database, the repo server, and the mobile app interface. The hardware is quite simple. It consists of the flattest shoe I could find in the store, three force sensing resistors, which are connected to the breadboard and which in turn is connected to the Raspberry Pi and which itself is duct taped on the side of the shoe. I will probably also hold a portable charger in my hand while I use this since Raspberry Pis don't have their own batteries. Bulky, I know, but we will talk about future potential improvements later on. The software in Raspberry Pi has two jobs take in the data from the force sensing resistors and upload them in bulk to the Firebase for future use. The Pi can measure how heavy the force on these resistors are by measuring the current flowing through them. And the Pi is coded to only send non-zero values, since a total zero data set would mean your feet are not actually on the shoes. And then comes the app interface, which is programmed to request a repo server to calculate raw pressure data to more useful ones. It also provides, for now, fake suggestions of random shoes models I found online, since reason I'll talk about later. And of course, the main job of the app interface is to display the process data, such as step time and average pressure, to normal human beings who don't read codes. Last but not least, here is the most important part of the project, the repo server. It takes the raw data stored in the Firebase and calculates them into understandable terms. The two major functions are, first, calculate the time it takes to take one step 
by looking at the timestamps of the beginning and the end of non-zero datasets. And the second is to calculate average pressure mathematically. Then of course, the server would send the calculated data back to Firebase, which would then be accessed by the app interface. Yes, I know, this is a very, very primitive prototype, but I have already thought a lot about future upgrading. Currently, the three biggest problem of this project is the bulkiness with the and the Pi, its inaccuracy of measurement, and its lack of data. The first problem can be solved by shrinking the breadboard circuits into customized small chips. The replacement of the bulky Pi, however, would be harder, but it shouldn't be impossible to find smaller replacement computers. The inaccuracy of measurement is caused by the nature of force sensing resistors not being the best pressure measuring tools. I plan to replace them with the pressure mapping sensors to provide more measurements and more accurate measurements. And lastly, by lack of data, I mean the lack of medical or athletic data to help the software to decide which shoe to suggest. For example, which shoe model fits someone with the flat feet, which shoe model fits someone with what gait pattern, etc. And as I said before, since I don't have these data right now, I cannot give proper suggestions. I plan to obtain this data from sports gear companies after making more advanced prototypes. This project currently has a lot of shortcomings, but also a lot of potentials. Hopefully one day I can fix all the known or unknown problems out there about this project so that you, the person watching this video right now, can find the fitting running shoes with ease. Thank you for watching.